The Deltaville Yachting Center has been a Virginia clean marina since 2003, and last fall, with the help of Friends of the Rappahannock, Hammer Time Marine Inc., and more than 30 volunteers, the center went one step further to reduce its impact on the environment by installing a living shoreline made up of native tidal grasses instead of a stone riprap barrier. I'm real excited about this project, this living shoreline, because it's something that I have hoped that we'd be able to do between C and D dock for the last three or four years. The shoreline here um, has been eroding over the years that this place has been a marina. I have some aerial pictures of the marina that are from back in the late 80s, and the shoreline went much, much farther out. First Isabel and then Ernesto did some significant damage here, and we probably lost three or four feet of shoreline, and it was undercutting. It was just concerning me because I knew that it would keep getting worse. We have a lot of heron and waterfowl, um, ducks and mallards and things that are over here, as well as a couple little otters, and I didn't want this to be hard. I wanted this to be a soft shoreline, a natural shoreline for them to be able to come and go. It's Michelle and Jimmy Meredith with Hammer Time um, talked to us about doing a permit and I told them what my thought was about living shoreline and so they put together the information on that. With the economy and things the way they are, we decided we would hold off for a little while and not spend the money um, that we had the permit. We paid to have the permit done, but we were waiting. Um, Friends of the Rappahannock were someone that I had heard of and thought that I would ask them and a couple of other nonprofit groups to help with volunteer effort, which would save us some money as we did the Living Shoreline. I was fortunate enough to meet with uh, Anna Grimm here at uh, Delta Villa uh, Yachting Center, who uh, had a, a long-standing interest in fixing this shoreline. And uh, um, we put our heads together and were able to uh, uh, figure out a way to uh, help get this funded through a grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. And uh, now uh, Anna has a, thanks to the help of the folks at Hammer Time, we've got a, a, a river bank here that's uh, gonna be uh, stable. With the funding and volunteers available, the Grimms went back to Jimmy and Michelle Meredith of Hammer Time Marine Inc., who designed and conducted the installation. Before planting native grasses, Volunteers place, secure, and tie down a biodegradable barrier to block the waves from eroding the shoreline further. These barriers are called core logs. The core logs, it's a, it's a hemp rope that's intertwined and it's filled with coconut husks. And the only place they make these things is India. The core log is, is going to disintegrate. It's, gonna, it's just going to rot away by, by the time it rots away with all the grasses and and nature itself with plants and vegetation uh, taking over, it will go back to its natural state without any erosion going on. With the core logs in place, sand is dumped between the core log and the shoreline. Volunteers spread out the sand and pack it under those places along the shoreline that have been undercutting. Several days later, volunteers return to plant three different types of grasses into the sand. The grasses that we're using is Spartina Arternal Florals, which are the grasses that grow in the water. Uh, the next ones back are the Spartina Patens, and the next ones back is the Desticula. Um, <laughs> Desticula and Patens are normally grow together and they don't like living in the water itself, so that's why we kind of plant them that way. We try to alternate uh, the grasses as well, so Mother Nature will tell them where they want to live and where they don't want to live. When the planting is done, the new shoreline looks like this. In a few years, however, the grasses will grow and spread and the shoreline should look more like this one, located only a few miles away at the Deltaville Maritime Museum. This living shoreline is only a few years old, and already the core logs have disappeared and only a few stakes are left visible. Uh, this does take a year or two before you finally start to see, you know, what all the hard work you put into it of what's happening. But the cost also is, uh, with this day and age, the cost is helping folks make that decision as well. This is uh, barely a quarter of the cost of what a hardened shoreline is. It's not even all about all that. It's not about instant gratification or the money. It's about taking care of the waters. They're not making they're not making any more shorelines. This is it, so we need to start taking care of what we've got. There's such a, um, uh, a great number of folks here in the, in the Middle Peninsula who are really interested in doing what they can to help the Bay. 
and uh, living shorelines give them a chance to be able to do something meaningful on their property. And when they're done, number one, it'll protect their investment in their property. And number two, it's creating habitat that means a healthier bay. And so I see it as a, a win all the way around. It's a demonstration project. Nobody wants to trust their property to an unproven technology. And when you come here and see it work, uh, it sells itself. I'm hoping that not only will it take care of our shoreline in a natural way, but it'll be educational and a great way for people to learn about this alternative instead of just riprap or seawalls. So that's why I'm excited about it. If you'd like to see the living shoreline for yourself, stop by the Deltaville Yachting Center, located in Deltaville on Virginia's Middle Peninsula. Thank <laughs> you.